dear students welcome to 12th class biobotany so we were discussing about asexual and sexual reproduction in plants last class we covered uh, contrivances of cross pollination or mechanisms present in plants for promoting cross pollination we have covered all those details today we are going to study about pollinating agents pollinating agents pollinating agents which helps in pollination which helps in pollination okay so what are pollin what are the poly pollinating agents pollinating agents may be abiotic agents pollinating agents may be abiotic agents or may be biotic agents okay abiotic agents means what is that for example wind water these are called abiotic agents wind and water and they help in pollination then what about biotic agents biotic agents include uh, animals and insects also birds these are included under the biotic agents okay so pollination with the help of wind which is called anemophily pollination with the help of wind is called anemophily and pollination with the help of water which is called hydrophily hydrophily so hydro this word related to water hydrophily then pollination with the help of animals which is called zoophily pollination with the help of animals is called zoophily and pollination with the help of insects which is called endomophily endomophily okay so pollinating agents are classified into two types biotic agents and abiotic agents what are those abiotic agents wind and water so pollination with the help of wind is called anemophily pollination with the help of water is called hydrophily then what about abiotic agents biotic agents include animals animals pollination with the help of animals which is called zoophily and insects also pollination with the help of insects is called endomophily first of all we are going to discuss about anemophily so what is anemophily we already know the pollination with the help of wind is called anemophily anemophily okay pollination by wind so the flowers which show anemophily they are called anemophilous flowers and now anemophilous flowers so the plants which perform anemophily which are situated in wind exposed region so if there is wind available then only pollination possible so these plants are presented or situated in wind exposed region plants situated in wind exposed region okay so wind available pollination then only pollination possible so anemophily is a chance even if there is no wind pollination is not going to happen so the pollen grains may not reach the target flower pollen grains may not reach the target flower okay so that is the main disadvantage of anemophily so to overcome this problem these plants those plants which is show anemophily they produce large number of pollen grains okay to reach the pollen grain target flower so there is wastage of pollen grains also see wastage of pollen grain they produce large number of pollen grains to reach target flower so many pollen grains are wasted wastage of pollen grains then example the plants which show anemophily example mainly grasses and sugar cane and cob 
connect bamboo then palm these are the plants uh, and also one maize these are the plants which show anemophily okay so this is anemophily pollination by the help of wind then what are the characters of these anemophilous flowers that's we are going to check next so what are the characteristic features of anemophilous flowers okay these flowers they uh, perform anemophily so let's check first of all the flowers or anemophilous flowers are produced pendulous or cactin cactin like or spike like inflorescence so if you observe grass plants or other plants which show uh, which have anemophilous flower they have inflorescence that inflorescence may be cactin or pendulous inflorescence like this or spike inflorescence on this spike inflorescence the flower flowers are present okay so anemophilous flowers are present on the pendulous or cactin like or spike like inflorescence and the flowers they are they are above the leaves because the inflorescence axis is very long -hated, so that they stand above the leaves okay then flowers are very small and inconspicuous and colorless and they are not scented and there is no nectar in flowers because it is done by with the help of wind there is no need of insects here to attract this flower okay or there is no need of birds here to attract the birds so flowers are very 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 small because they have to uh, uh, and they are very very small they are inconspicuous and they are not scented, no, uh, no smell at all and uh, colorless and also no nectar also present in flower. Okay, then what about the stamens? The stamens in the flower, it is uh, numerous number of stamens are present and in the stamen and there produces numerous number of pollen grains. Okay, then the stigma, the stigma of the flower which is large and feathery which are modified the stigma which is modified to catch the pollen grains the plants which produce flowers before new leaves forms so they can avoid the hindrance of the leaves to release the pollen grains so flowers are produced as to first before new leaves comes okay and in some plants the pollen grains are uh, the anther which burst violently and these pollen grains are released into air for example, in case of Arctica, Arctica plant, they release pollen grains like this. The burst and they release pollen grains. So these are about anemophilous flowers. What are those characteristics? What are the characteristics of anemophilous flowers? Anemophilous flowers are produced on spike or pendulous cattle like inflorescence, and the inflorescence axis is very elongated. So uh, they are they are above the leaves of the plant and uh, the uh, flowers present on this inflorescence are small inconspicuous and uh, colorless and not center scent means no smell at all and no nectar nectar also not present so this scent and nectar which attract birds and uh, insects so here there is no need of insects or birds for poll pollination it is by wind and stamens are numerous in the flower and large number of pollen grains are released and the uh, stigma of the flower which is uh, large and feathery which are modified to catch the pollen grains okay so these are about anemophilous flowers so let's study one example for anemophilous flower you know zia maize or maize they perform anemophily okay so pollination by the help of wind so this is as uh, this is maize plant so they they are unisexual and monoecious maize plant they are monoecious and unisexual monoecious you know what is mean by monoecious means male flower and female flower they are present on the same plant that is monoecious okay and they are unisexual male flower separate and female flower separate so the male inflorescence present on this maize, which is called taser. Taser. So, male inflorescence. Which is called taser. 
we have studied the characteristic features of uh, um, anemophilus flower at that time we have discussed that the inflorescence axis is very long and they are above the leaves so here you can see the inflorescence male inflorescence is they are above the leaves okay at the top and female inflorescence which is called oh female inflorescence which is called cork and they are positioned at the lower level of the plant at the lateral sides so this is cork or female inflorescence and female inflorescence they have large stigma and they are positioned at the lateral level the maize pollen grains they are large and they are heavy so they are heavy that means more weight so it is not possible to pollinate by a light breeze okay so what happens here when mild wind available mild wind available this inflorescence male inflorescence will shake okay so when they shake this pollen grains they falls vertically and reach nearby female inflorescence okay so here they fall on the female inflorescence or female flower and pollination takes place okay so why this happen because the pollen grains are large and they are heavy they cannot carry it by a light breeze under a mild wind available this inflorescence or the flowers they will shake uh, this pollen grains present on this inflorescence or flower they falls and they land on this stigma stigma present here because stigma is large and they are beyond the leaves okay and stigma length is around 23 cm the stigma which is very large and which catch the pollen grains on this stigma okay so this is the pollination or anemophily present in zea maize so we what we have discussed here zea maize male inflorescence is called tassel and which is present on the above the plants and the male and female inflorescence which is called cob and they are present at the lower level of the plant and this male inflorescence which shake when uh, mild wind available and this high heavy pollen grains large heavy pollen grains they falls and they land on the stigma and pollination takes place next type of pollination that is hydrophily hydrophily which means pollination by the help of water hydrophily so which type of plant shows hydrophily especially aquatic plants not to act all aquatic plants they are not performing hydrophily there are exceptions okay so for example water lily and icornia they are aquatic plants and they are not pollinated by the help of water they are pollinated by the uh, through wind or by insects okay so aquatic plants only few plants they show hydrophily for example valis lilia and hydrilla these plants they show hydrophily and the flowers of these plants they are called hydrophilus flowers so hydrophily means pollination by water and aquatic plants they show hydrophily and all aquatic plants they are not performing hydrophily there are exceptions like uh, icornia and water lily they are aquatic plants but they are pollinated by wind or by insects okay these two plants varisneria varisneria and hydrilla they are aquatic plants they are pollinated by the help of water okay the hydrophily which is divided into two types epi hydrophily epi hydrophily and hypo hydrophily then major important point about hydrophilus flowers the floral envelope 
in the hydrophilus flower may be absent or reduced okay floral envelopes in hydrophilus flowers reduced or absent okay floral envelope the floral envelope or uh, uh, floral envelope is absent or reduced in hydrophilus flower and the pollen grains in this uh, hydrophilus flowers they are protected by mucilage covering mucilage covering present around this pollen grains okay so this is about hydrophily hydrophily is two types epihydrophily and hypohydrophily so next we are going to discuss about epihydrophily so hydrophily you already know pollination by the help of water it is divided into two types epihydrophily and hypohydrophily epihydrophily means the pollination which takes place at the water level surface level so we here we have taken one example varis maria spiralis this plant it is dioecious which means male and female plants are separate okay so this is a female valisneria and this is male valisneria so how epiphyly takes place in valisneria so look here female plant valisneria they have a solitary flower and with a long coiled stalk with the help of this long coiled stalk these flowers they come at the surface uh, water level okay the surface of water level they come at the surface of water level then this female flower has cup like depressions okay so we will state we will understand what is the reason behind this cup like depression then this is a male plant this is a male inflorescence and this male inflorescence they, they produce male flowers these are male flowers okay these male flowers they come in contact with female flowers by settling in this cup like depression of female flower okay so male flower they settle with the female flower by falling in this cup like depression of female flower and they, they make a contact with the stigma of the flower and their pollination takes place so so after pollination the female flower what happens it will come back to underwater okay the long coiled uh, stalk which will which will coil and uh, which will bring this female flower under water and under water here the fruit formation takes place okay so this female uh, this varis maria spiralis it is completely sub submerged aquatic plant okay they are not exposed above the water surface level so these are about epihydrophily. Next one, hypohydrophily. Hypohydrophily, which means the hydrophily or pollination by the help of water, which takes place inside the water. So that's why it is called hypohydrophily. You already know epihydrophily pollination takes place at the surface of water level. Here it is inside the water level, inside the water. That's why it is called hypohydrophily. And the plants will show Zostera marina. One of the examples for hydrophily plant, hydrophilus plant, Zostera marina okay so that is hydrophily so next we are going to discuss about zoophily zoophily means the pollination by the help of animals which is called zoophily and the flowers they are called zoophilus okay so different types of birds and animals which helps in pollination and also insects also help in pollination they are also coming under zoophily category so zoophily which means pollination by the help of uh, by the help of animals so first of all we are going to discuss ornithophily ornithophily means 
the pollination by the help of birds which is called ornithophily and you know examples erythrina and bombax and bignonia these plants they are pollinated by the help of birds like uh, hummingbirds and birds and honey eaters etc okay then what are the characteristic features of this ornithophilus flowers so if you observe these ornithophilus flowers those flowers they have cup shaped or tubular shaped flowers okay so now you observe this hummingbird which flowers uh, from which flowers they take nectar you observe those flowers are cup shaped or tubular shaped okay and those flowers are large sized flowers and the flowers are brightly colored like uh, red yellow orange like brightly colored flowers and this or uh, those flowers they have no smell at all they are not scented okay and large number of nectar uh, present in those flowers to attract these birds okay so these are the main characteristic features of ornithophilus flowers so what, what is ornitho ornithophily ornithophily which means pollination by birds okay and examples bignonia and bombax are examples the plants and birds like hummingbirds and sunbirds they help in ornithophily and what about the characteristic features of these flowers ornithophilus flowers they have tubular uh, or cup shaped flower and the flowers are large in size and flowers have brightly they are brightly colored and they produce large quantity of nectar and they are not scented okay scentless not smell at all so that's about ornitho film